there, I'm Lindsay Perot, and I want to take you through these digital interactive math notebooks so you know how to input your answers onto every single slide that you come across. So when you first um, check out your notebook, you'll be here in slides, and I just want to take you through these tools really quickly. So the arrows are your undo and redo buttons. You've got print. You can zoom in. Um, zoom in is really helpful if you're working on something smaller or you just want to see better. You just click and zoom and then you can always um, spread it out here and then to just make sure though after you zoom you go back to clicking the arrow because if you don't and you stay on zoom then every time you click the screen you're going to zoom in really really far and in that case you'll have to zoom back out a bunch. So I'm going to stay zoomed in just about, let's see. We'll stay at 100%. Okay, and I'm gonna go back here. Um, there are times where you may need to show work, and if you do that, you can type in your work, but if you have more complicated questions, you might need to be doing some handwriting. And if that happens, you can still insert your work to be able to show your teacher. Just insert it as an image. So you'll click this button here, upload from the computer, and you can upload um, an image to share with your teacher. There are also times that you might need shapes, and I'll give you examples of that in a little bit. These are your line tools. Um, you have comments over here that you can, if you wanna leave a question for your teacher or a note, you can do that there. Um, and that's really all that you should have to um, deal with while you're working here. So let's go over here. Um, I've put simple questions in here just to make this easy for you, but, um, you can go through this on your own. You'll have access to these slides, so you can try it out. So the first type of input that you'll see is text boxes. And most of them will be shaded in blue, but some of them I will have as transparent, depending on um, what the question is. So you might see them like this, or you might see them like this. But either way, please know you have full control over these text boxes. So if you want to, Okay, so the answer here is 57. But if that was too small, too large, you can make things bigger. If you wanted to um, say it equals 57, you can adjust the box, you can move it over here. Um, unless you're given specific instructions to not touch the boxes, please know that you can make these work for you. If you wanted to show your work, um, you could do that as well. So if we did 10 plus 20, um, you could always, to have these lined up, if you highlight them and then go up here to align left, um, and then you can underline, and the answer is 30. Okay, so, and then let's say, oh, I want that bigger, so I'll make it bigger. Okay, just know that these text boxes, you are not limited by the size and the font. As given to you. You can certainly move them around to best work for you. Sometimes you'll also have tables where you can actually type in the table itself. So in this case it says complete the table if the rule is y equals x plus 2. So all you would do here is um, type in your answers. And again, sometimes I try my best to make sure the tables are formatted properly, but occasionally if you type in an answer, um, one might be aligned left and just, again, no, you can come up here, you can center align things, you can change the font, you can make it bigger. Maybe you want to make it bold so your teacher can easily see your answers. Maybe you want to change the color. Um, you can do all of that as well. You will have a variety of drag and drop questions. So in this case, this is um, a definition where in this specific example, you're defining expression. Um, it's a mathematical expression that, or a mathematical phrase that can contain numbers. Now, sometimes when you drag these, it'll there'll be nothing here afterwards, and other times, like you'll drag this box. So let me show you what it might look like. So other times, if you drag one, there'll still be one left, and all that means is that it could be used again. So. Um, I'm going to put these in here just to show you the correct answers. And again, I make sure that these fit the spaces, but if for some reason something needs to be a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, you can control these boxes as well. So all you do, just drag and drop. 
Drag and drop also applies to sorting activities. So I just made this really simple. Sort out the addition and the subtraction problems. You just drag and drop. And it doesn't have to be perfectly aligned. Um, just move them where they need to go. Another way you'll see drag and drop is if you have to highlight an answer, either multiple choice, or in this case, drag a circle to highlight the word or words that signal each operation, and then type the operation indicated. So here I would circle the word sum. Um, I actually should have had a text box here, but that's actually, I'm kind of glad that I didn't. Because if you needed to write a note and not you didn't want to use the comment feature, um, or a text box was forgotten somewhere, you just come up here to text box, and click it once and then you can drag and make a box. Your box will automatically populate to be transparent. Um, the sum of four and a number is 10. You can type that in. And again, if you don't like the way that looks, then change the font, make it smaller. Um, if you want to fill it in so your teacher can see the answer, you can do that as well. Um, another type of drag and drop, drop in this instance, you're comparing comparing five to eight, you just drag and drop, and that's it. Okay, with fractions, so let's say that you have um, fraction questions and they pop up a lot. It, it doesn't really matter um, what grade level you are in, but they can pop up. So if you have a fraction problem, most of the time, I will have given you the answer space as a mixed number because it's just easier that way. Um, however, you don't, let's say your answer is not a mixed number. Um, well, in this case it is. So you could, in this case, your answer is one and one half. Okay, but before that it was three halves. So when you added this out, you would have gotten three halves. You can easily take this, all I hit was, du hit was duplicate. Um, you could just right click and copy paste. Um, you could say it was three halves and then say, well, that equals one and one half. So you can certainly use this, move these around. All this is, is a mini table. So you can see that um, the table options come up here. So that's what it was. So fractions, again, um, let's say that your answer is not a mixed number and you don't want to have that in there. Um, so the answer to this is 17 fifteenths. We're going to just pretend it's 5 sevenths. So if you don't need the whole number part, you could just delete it. Um, on the flip side of that is if you're doing something with fractions and you end up with just a whole number answer, let's say our answer was 10, you could just type in the whole number and delete the fraction spot. So just because there's something there, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have to use it with the fractions. Something else that you might find that you need to do with fractions is to make the boxes bigger. So if we have a fraction answer that's like 13 over 100, and let's say the box I gave you, when you type in your fraction, that happens, all you have to do is drag it to make it bigger. Okay, so you have the freedom to um, move things around. Sometimes you'll also have fraction bars. So if you're asked to model questions with fraction bars, you'll either be given them on that slide or you'll have to copy paste from another slide. You can, there'll be multiple ones here, but um, if you needed to, you could always just make a copy of something if you, if you ran out of fraction bars over here. Um, you also could insert a shape if you're trying to, you know, um, Add it, show a problem, and then you can duplicate it, fill it in differently. Um, so you could kind of do your one halves this way. And when you're using shapes, it's not going to be perfectly, um, the sizes aren't going to be perfect, but you can still, if you don't have fraction bars, you can kind of make your own just with the shapes figure. Okay. Um, when you are deleting something, I accidentally um, almost did it right here. You want to make sure that whatever you can group delete by clicking and dragging but it's very sensitive. So if I even catch the edge of this fraction bar, it's going to come up and be deleted together. And we don't wanna do that. So just be careful when you're deleting. Um, but like I just did, you could always hit the undo button. So if you delete something you didn't mean to, just undo. Okay, puzzles and matching. I'm gonna zoom out here. 
I gave you two different kinds of puzzles here as an example. A lot of matching ones you'll just line up together. But let's say we wanted to do this puzzle. And oftentimes when you have a puzzle, you'll have a table to type in your answers. So you would simply say D and 5 to indicate that that was a match. Once you make your match, you can drag them off the slide. This isn't something that um, where whatever's not on the slide won't show up. If you drag something off to the side, your teacher still will be able to see it. So think of it as you actually have a lot more space than just the slide. Another type of puzzle that you might see will be these three-part ones here um, where you can match them up. Often, since it's a smaller, you might be able to leave them all on the screen. Um, and don't it doesn't have to be perfect, but same thing. You can highlight and drag them off the screen. So puzzles and matching are pretty simple. Um, here's an example of a maze. So you have to read the directions carefully. This says to um, find your way through the maze by moving through the boxes with correct answers. So we're going to start at start. And I can only come off of start from here or here. I'm going to look here. 22 plus 19 is not 31, but 10 plus 2 is 12. So that's going to be where I go first. I'm just going to drag this circle up here to indicate that's the correct answer. Um, and then we're going to move on from there. So this is correct. Um, I just typed these questions in really quickly. So obviously from here, both this and this are correct. Um, that won't happen on an actual um, activity. You'll only have one way to go. So we'll come back down here. 8 times 3 is 24. 9 times 6 is not 56, so I can't go there next. It's got to be this way, and so on. So you'll just work your way through the maze, and you can see that the ones that you've chosen, when you drag the circles, they are highlighted. Okay, coloring activities. Obviously, when you are um, virtual, coloring looks a little bit different, but it can still be done. So what you do here, so here's your question. Um, you can, you'll be given a box to highlight your correct answers. So our answers here are red and blue. These are actual shapes. So my answer to number one is red. So I am going to select this and I'm on a Mac. So if I hold command, or I'm sorry, if I hold control at the same time, oops, sorry, shift, I'm sorry. I hold shift, I can click all the number ones at once and fill them all in at one time. So one is supposed to be red. There you go. I can also do that with number twos. Um, I'm going to click all my twos and make these blue. And I'm not going to click the twos and the words, and I'll show you why in a second. So the twos are blue, and you can use any color blue. Like if you want to use this blue, it's fine. Um, now, these are letters. This is text. It's not a shape. So if I do shape fill here, this is what's going to happen. It's going to fill in the whole shape rather than the letters, and we don't want to do that. So what I need to do is I need to actually go to the text fill, and you can see it will change that to the correct color. So that is how you'll do a coloring activity in this notebook. The last thing I want to show you is graphing. So when you are graphing, you will be given the information, um, I'm sorry, the pieces that you need. So in this case, I want graphing x is less than or equal to 3. You're going to pick the right circle. You're going to pick the right arrow. And you are not restricted here. You can make this bigger. You can make it thicker. You can change the color. Um, you want to make sure you're getting your work done as a priority, but you also can make it um, work for you. So same thing here. Um, so negative 6, negative 9, we'll graph here, negative 4, negative 5. So these points are given to you right here. So all you have to do is drag them right off the table. 3 and 9. Okay. Oops, I'm sorry, wrong one. 0 and 3. So, and then once you get the points on here, then you can move your arrow around, or I'm sorry, your line to show um, that it was graphed. Another thing you can do, um, this one down here, I did not give you points and lines, and 99.9% .9 of the time there will be something there, but if that happens, just come up here and make your own. So you can grab a circle, you can fill it whatever color you want, and then you can copy paste to make another one. 
So if I was graphing this, I would be four, and then negative one is my next point, and arrows. So we want an arrow like that. Now, here's if you look at this, if I made an arrow, I only I'm missing an arrow over here. So I can just come up here and add it on. And then drag it over here and graph. So these interactive notebooks um, are very flexible. You cannot, of course, edit the background. You can't change what's back here, um, but you can certainly make the given text boxes, fractions, um, and stuff like that work for you. So I hope this helped clarify um, these interactive notebooks. And one more thing I do wanna show you, um, I skipped over this. Sometimes you'll see this audio button. This audio button is where a definition or something will be read to you. This definition is not gonna match up with the work here. I just put it here as an example, but all you have to do is click. The base is the bottom number in an exponential term. It is the factor. And there you go. And you can listen to the audio that is there as well. And sometimes you will have something to click. So um, with your table of contents, often I will insert a box. It'll be transparent, so you won't even see that it's there. But to click here, so slide three. So your table of contents might look like there's nothing there, but if you click and then, okay, I wanna go to slide three, it'll take you to the proper location. So that's all. This is your digital interactive math notebook tutorial. And um, hopefully this is all you need to have success with your um, digital math work this year.